This video will cover replacing the pallet material on the treble side. A uh, couple of simple things to start with. Removing bellows pins, use a pair of end cutters. It's that easy to be available on Amazon, etc. Grasp the pin and just put it straight out. I store my pins on little blocks I've made which as you can see I've got 12 holes for posh Italian boxes with 12 bellows pins labelled treble and bass front and back so this is the treble bottom front goes in that hole ensures pins go back where they came from not so much a problem with honers, definitely can be a problem with Italian boxes where the bellows pins seem to be a little more picky. And remove the bellows pins, the treble end lifts off. Uh, remove the grill, two little twist devices. Oh, this grill's on backwards. This piece here should be on the outside, stick your finger in to pull it off. Now remove the treble reed blocks. They're held in place with two. Yeah. Two screws there and there which are difficult to see in this light. Undo the two screws and slide back the catches. Lift out the reed blocks. There are the two catches. To make life easier when replacing the pallet facing I usually take the keyboard off. The keyboard is held in place with two screws, one at the bottom and one at the top. Use proper size screwdriver and be careful these screws appear to be made of cheese. They're even worse on the Chinese versions. Keyboard then lifts up and you need to wiggle it because there are two again hard to see two supports for the keyboard which have to wiggle past the uh, buttons. So there we have treble action and that's the reason we're going to replace it. Stop that horrible noise. So open the pallet and then just twist the glue will let go. And there we have all the pallets off. A small amount of glue left on various of the levers. I use a scalpel just to scrape either side of it. And
and there we have one treble in with no pallets. Next job is to clear up, clean up the pallets, to remove the glue. I use a scalpel, a bit of gentle persuasion. Really important that the slot in which the lever fits is clear of any glue to make so the lever sits down properly later. Then scalpel blade just under the edge of the old facing. And then rip it away. Rinse and repeat 21 times or 20 more times. Et voila. To finish preparing the facings prior to putting the new pallet material on, I usually use some 80 grit. This is the pallet material that I use. I get from Charlie Marshall. Information in the doobly doo down below. It's thicker leather and has a felt backing which makes everything quieter. I also use fast grab PVA. Which I think I got from Axminster Tools. Then if you're lucky like me, you have some pieces of the uh, Narragate Railway track. Really good weights. Take a scalpel and we'll cut them out.
Now time to refit them. Fortunately, as you can possibly see, there is a shadow from where the old pallets used to sit. Probably in the nicotine staining on the woodwork. So it's just a matter of aligning the pallets with where the old pallets sat. Now the tricky bit, because the thickness of the pallet, the thickness of the pallet material has increased, this rod has come up slightly, which means the button is further down than it used to be. So when we put the keyboard back in place, we'll find that all the buttons are virtually down inside the keyboard. So now we need to do some judicious bending. Do this before we glue the pallets in place. Push the buttons up about a quarter of an inch or so. It's usually about enough. Put your thumb on the back of the button and push. Now I have to refit the keyboard properly and then adjust all the action. And have a look along the keyboard, see what's high and what's low. And to adjust it to your personal like. Now to adjust it, put your thumb on the button, the lever that you're adjusting and then just press gently on the button and it will go back more or less to where you want it. That doesn't look too bad. So now all that's left is to hot glue the pallets back on. There may be some other adjustments to the mech to the keyboard yet but we can't do it until the pallets are fixed in place. Now we use hot glue to hold the pallets back on the levers. We now come upon the next problem. Which is when you bend the rods to get the button height correctly it appears to put a twist into the action so that now 
some of the buttons will stick down. It won't do it now. As the buttons are not central in the hole. No, there you go. I have a very good pair of pliers. Well, they're actually not very good pair of pliers, but they're really useful for this job. They're bent, which means you can get underneath the keyboard and tweak any buttons that are sticking. This one here, for instance, you can hear it's rubbing. So I can get that up under there and put a bit of twist on and the button now. No, a bit too much twist in fact. Now the button no longer rubs. There we go all the way up the keyboard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Short one. Quite easy to put the read box in the wrong way round. It just doesn't work. Put the grill back on if I can find it. And let's see if it works. 